Hey, what's up everyone? So today I want to tell you about this brand that I love and you guys know I love and they're called Function of Beauty and Function of Beauty is a really great online customizable shampoo conditioning service where you just take a brief two minute survey online and fill out what your hair needs are and then once you do that it will generate your own individual unique formula. You can even pick your own scent, the color of your bottle to be customizable specifically for your hair because hair is not one size fits all. Obviously, we all have different kinds of hair and therefore our hair is going to require different kinds of ingredients. For me personally, my hair is dry and it's pretty much just unmanageable. My personal formula is specifically for my hair and it has drastically taken out a lot of the frizz and also just in general made my hair look and feel a lot healthier and that's why I love them. Not only are they great for your looks but also function of beauty is vegan, sulfate free, no parabens, GMOs or toxins. Function of beauty in order to be more earth friendly recently transitioned all boxes to be 100% recyclable and that's the kind of company I like to support. One thing I really loved about Function of Beauty <laughs> is that you can make it customizable because you can even get your name on the bottle. It just feels like it's for you. Everything about it is for you. The formula of what's in it, the colors, your name on the bottle. It even comes with cute stickers so you can decorate your bottle and make it you know really cute and it's just such an awesome self-care thing to invest in and the best part is you don't even have to go outside to get it it's delivered right to your doorstep and all it takes is an online two-minute quiz the hair mask is also super great as well and this is the at one of the add-ons you can get with your shampoo and conditioners that highly recommend the add-ons they ship in all of these different countries and also if you want 20% off your order function of beauty was kind enough to extend that to everybody um, all you do is use my link link is in the description and the pinned comment as always I know you guys are gonna like function of beauty thank you so much for sitting through that now let's get back to the video hey what's up everyone it's star girl the practical witch and welcome back to my channel I need to think of a new intro I realize how repetitive that's been recently like and welcome back to my channel Through my research and spiritual journey, I have had the revelation that sidereal astrology is the truth because it's based on the fixed constellations in the sky. And I know a lot of you out there are very attached to your tropical sun, moon, and rising zodiac signs. And I'm not gonna take that away from you. I'm not gonna be this huge Nazi that's like, okay, well you have to disown your zodiac sign. But what I'm asking you guys to do is in the future for my predictions, that you do use your sidereal rising sign and moon sign because those are the most important signs. A lot of the time, sidereal astrology has nothing to do with personalities or stereotypes you hear on tropical meme pages or anything like that. Back in the day, I would be so upset that I was a Gemini rising because of all of the hate Geminis used to get online. I clung on to my tropical cancer rising. So I understand not wanting to transfer because of stupid stereotypes you hear online. Astrology has nothing to do with stereotypes. It's about your soul map, your strengths, your weaknesses, and how you can utilize it better to achieve things in life. And with tropical astrology, it's more of a modern practice. In Vedic astrology, each sign is separated by two to three different nakshatras. So not only are you looking at the zodiac signs going across the wheel, you're looking at what nakshatra within your zodiac sign is happening throughout the wheel. So it's a lot more in depth because with those nakshatras, which are just lunar mansions that separate the regular zodiacs in the sky, you are also seeing, okay, my sun is in air but it's in the nakshatra of this and each nakshatra has its own deity animal and story within your zodiac sign so you can get more of an in-depth reason of why two Aries two Tauruses don't act or look or behave the same because it's separated by nakshatras and those nakshatras are separated by more degrees so essentially guys 
that's why I follow Sidereal Astrology because it is so much more in depth. There are some astrologers though that don't need a traditional base and that's okay because some, some of you guys out there are born with the gift. So if you're born with the gift, if you just have it, you know, disregard what I say. But at the end of the day, it is nice to have good classical knowledge. You know, it's just good to have as much knowledge as you possibly can on the subject. A lot of the times what you're exposed to in magazines or on, you know, um, gossip channels and stuff like that. It's a pop version of astrology. And first of all, I love pop music. I love all of the pop artists. Most of my playlist is pop music, so there's nothing wrong with that. However, it's two different types of astrology. Tropical astrology, unless you go to someone who's really in tune and studied, which I've met plenty of tropical astrologers who were, it is going to be something that is more pop culture in nature. Unless you go to a specific well-versed tropical astrologer, because tropical astrology is what you see on your apps, it's what you see on those um, on meme pages, it's what you see and they're great those things are great because they introduce you to astrology and I hate when people are like I remember when I started my YouTube channel my channel for spirituality was geared towards kids it was geared towards people my age and younger actually and I, I remember like I would get so upset because people wouldn't take my spirituality channel seriously because it was geared towards younger people the audience I wanted to go for which was children so I I actually think tropical astrologers who do the meme pages they're doing God's work because they are introducing you know um, younger people to the idea that there's a greater plan outside of the mundane they're opening them up to a spiritual pattern they're showing them the beginning stages of the pattern of life and I'm getting the chills because I'm so passionate about it so there's no putting down tropical astrologers there's no putting down meme pages or pop astrology or getting into to astrology through tropical there's none and there are some tropical astrologers like i said on youtube who are bomb and don't need traditional astrology that's fine but what i will say is that um I will say this, that most of what you're exposed to is pop astrology and it has nothing to do with in-depth astrology. It's okay to get into that as first. It's okay to be doing it because you want to get, you know, the younger crowd. That's okay. But my channel and future and future things for my channel, future astrology for my channel and the things that I offer is not going to be pop astrology anymore because I am hitting my Saturn return. I'm turning 27 years old. I'm maturing and I'm just not into making a video anymore that goes this is why you're hot based on your zodiac sign um, I'm getting older I want to talk more about philosophy the meaning of life your karma I want to get more in depth than what I have in the past with astrology memes and I still love astrology memes I still love Instagram horoscopes that's great introduction but for me and my channel we are doing sidereal astrology. We are Everybody is different. Everybody is different. Some tropical astrologers make great predictions with just the degrees and tropical placements and all of that stuff. And if that works for you, that's fine. But in my practice, in my studies, on my vision quest that I went on in Las Vegas, which wasn't really in the city or the fun part, it's been pretty much a year of soul reflection, no water vision quest in the desert, um, having my Saturn moon and Saturn return and depression and thinking and studying for the past year, which I'm just now getting out of because I'm getting out of my Jupiter Saturn Dasha into my Jupiter Mercury Dasha. But what, whatever the case is, guys, it's up to you. But please, uh, all I'm asking is study astrology. Study both. Study all kinds of astrology. Because when you have a good, solid knowledge of all of the different types of astrology, when you know tropical on the back of your head, sidereal on the black back of your hand, numerology, or whatever other astrology, Mayan astrology, learn all of the astrology, and then really meditate on what's... what's um, what's really calling to you. Because what I wanna say guys is I feel like we're in this age and this is something that's really been on my mind heavily and I wanna talk about it. Where we're so judgmental towards other people. And 
it was so judgmental about what their belief systems are. We're so judgmental about, you know, people who disagree with us. Like, and even I do it. I catch myself doing it too. Even though I pride myself in being an open-minded Sagittarius, I am guilty of that. And it's not something I'm proud of because when you become judgmental and defensive to new things, what you're doing is you're blocking off experience. So, a lot, like, I'll give you an example. A lot of it stems from fear of change and new things too. So I'll give you an example. For the longest time, I was so scared of taking singing lessons because I was scared that the singing teacher would judge me and that, you know, singing teachers would be mean because I had a lot of mean teachers growing up. Then I made this prejudiced judgment about an experience and something new that has been extremely enriching in my life now. So what I'm saying is, you know, try to release preconceived notions or judgments about what you're used to and just try to embrace, you know, something different. So when you know everything, you can decide what you believe. And even this goes for Christianity as well. And that's why, you know, certain people on YouTube who were New Agers, they want to be Christians, just let them be. Let them be Christians. Let them believe what they want. Let them preach what they want because that is their wisdom. That is their truth. It is not our place to judge them or to attack them or bully them. It's not okay. And I feel like I wanted to make this video because what's going on is Aquarius, the Aquarius full moon is going on, um, when is it? The Aquarius full moon is going on September 2nd, 2020. And the interesting thing about this full moon in sidereal astrology is that it is in the nakshatra, uh, known as 100 healers, medicine men to the gods. And in the constellation of Aquarius, it is within the water pouring out of the jug. So we're about to have a full moon in that constellation. Now, what rules the moon? It is cancer. So anytime there are planets in cancer during a full moon, this is going to play a major role in what we can expect. And during the time of the full moon, August 2nd, 2020, there is going to be Venus in cancer. And Venus is the sign of women, relationships, love, beauty, and art. And then the ruler of cancer the moon is going to be in Aquarius, the sign of groups of people, radical change, and also in the nakshatra of medicine healers, 100 healers, 100 physicians. So this is about healing the divine feminine of our soul. This is about healing our sacral chakra. This is about healing our relationship with the women in our lives specifically because this full moon is in um, opposition to the sun in Leo. So what this is asking us to do is balance our masculine and feminine energies. So our masculine energy is something that gets things done. It brings us the confidence and courage to work, to grind, to make achievements in life. But the feminine energy is, what's give, it is what gives us life. It's what gives us creativity. The feminine energy does things and expresses herself not because she's trying to reach a goal but because she's creating from her feeling center and also because she just wants a way to express herself in a creative way so what we're essentially doing during this full moon is healing the feminine side of our souls and we're doing this by also healing our relationship with women and this also goes along with the south node going into Jaista. I'm sorry if I can't pronounce. I have, I can't even say English, but um, it's going into the nakshatra in Scorpio that deals with the scorned woman, the older wife who was her husband's least favorite because she was apparently older and she got jealous of the younger wife who was Rohini which is where the north node will transition into this year so the south node is past life debts and our wounds coming it's spiritual awakenings it's going into Scorpio the sign of J uh the sign the nakshatra in Scorpio that's about um, women feeling, you know, older or not favored because they're not beautiful, feeling wrathful, but also it talks about wisdom, which is what Alyssa Tran on her channel talks about 
with the are you the maiden crone or whatever the the nakshatra in scorpio is about the older wise woman who has a lot of knowledge to share but she's not necessarily the young maiden the sweet you know virgin pure ready to ready to be married in a white dress you know she is the older one the wise one the one who's known as the hag or the the elder who you know, just wants to be seen as beautiful and appreciated just as much as Rohini, the youngest wife who is admired because of her beauty. So really, this is about how, what role do we identify with in this world during these nodal shifts happening in November, in September 2020. And this full moon is really shedding light on how we treat women, how women treat women and how men treat women. Are men being respectful towards women just because they find you attractive or are they respecting your mind and your wisdom because they realize that they have a divine masculine wisdom, but women also have a divine feminine wisdom and we all should be balanced in both energies to be complete. How are we as women feeling about other women? How are we treating other women? Are are we putting other women down out of jealousy or insecurity? Are we trying to see the beauty in other women while putting ourselves down? Are we, you know, internally misogynistic as women because we don't want to see other women succeed because we think it's all a competition about who's the most beautiful and who's the most favored wife, like in the tale of the nakshatra in Scorpio and the nakshatra directly opposite in Taurus, which is where the north and south nodes are transitioning September 23rd. This is a lot about healing the divine feminine this next month and this full moon in Aquarius is about how can we support other women or people who identify as women how can we heal our sacral chakras the divine feminine energy in our soul right and it's about how we can treat other women better and recognize the healing qualities of women and the relationships in our life and value that and appreciate that. Value the young maiden who is just blossoming into her own and honoring her beauty and also valuing the older, wiser woman who's still beautiful but more mature, more seasoned. It's about respecting women during this full moon. That's how I really feel, especially um, women to other women, and not only that, um, men respecting all the women in their life, respecting the elder women in their life who are there to give them wise advice about what it means to embrace the feminine side of themselves as a male, because in each of us, no matter our gender, if our feminine energy is unhealed, it means that we're always pressing on the grind, on the go, doing things of this world and we're not tapping into our creative self-expression, our sacral chakra, our sexuality, what gives us pleasure and joy. And it's really important as men that we honor, we, we, I let it slip, but it's, it's important that we, uh, we all honor the older wise woman in our life and the wisdom that she has, our mothers, our grandmothers, older women who have been through more. And also we honor the beauty of the younger generation and we see them as, you know, another, we see them as ourselves and not to create such, so there, essentially, I feel the channel message for this full moon is there needs to be a radical shift in the way that we treat women, the way that we look at women. There is an imbalance in this culture, like Alyssa Tran said in her video about the maiden and the crone, and I really feel like this is the time with the nodal shift into Scorpio, a south node in Scorpio, north node in Taurus, that we begin to balance and realize the beauty in both the young maiden, the fresh Georgia peach, the young woman who's a little naive but beautiful and in the prime of her youth. And we also honor the wisdom of older women and we shouldn't as women look down upon or tear anything apart because it's all a stage of life and we will all be there at some point. And the more that women empower each other, the more we become in groups, the more we can heal each other. And that's what I feel like this full moon is about. And it's also about just in general, in your life, you're going to run into, in the month of September 2020, a lot of women who are going to be healers to you, whether it is known or whether it is not to them. Anybody could be a healer. I had a singing teacher, and I, was, I wanted to tell this story. I just got a singing teacher from the first time in my life I got one. 
and she was teaching me breath work, the importance of inhaling, exhaling, stretching, becoming loose, and it was just a warm-up to do singing, but she didn't even realize what she was doing is healing for me. Because as a Gemini rising, I have such bad anxiety. I'm always in my head. I'm, I'm bad at being present. And I have a hard time talking slow, controlling my breath. And just the singing teacher didn't even realize how healing it was for her to be teaching me breath work and how to relax and feel comfortable in myself. And I realize this is the manifestation of the full moon happening in Aquarius and sidereal astrology with Venus being in Cancer, which is the ruler of the moon. This is about accidentally running into women who are healers to you. And it's complete, most of the time it's oblivious to you, whether it's a teacher teaching you how to get a handle on your anxiety with breath work, whether it's a friend who just is always there when you need them and they say something that really just inspires you to make change. Look around you. There are so many healers, groups of beautiful women around you who are healers to you in your life or people who identify as women or people who are heavily in their feminine energy. This is also about healing the divine feminine of our soul, doing creative expression, reveling in our creativity, not for a goal, but because it feels good. Nowadays, we're always like, oh, well, I have to be creative so I can get a YouTube channel, get a lot of subscribers, or put my art out there and get a lot of money from my art, or become famous or recognized from my art. That kills creativity. That kills your divine feminine side. The only time you are going to achieve great recognition for your work is if you like the tide, take time to pull back, pull into yourself and appreciate and revel in your creative pleasures, not for a goal, but because it feels good. Listening to your body about what feels good, what makes you passionate. These are important things that are starting to happen September 2020. And through listening to our bodies and what we feel like doing, our passions, this is when we will find our talents and ultimately lead us to making money through our life purpose by doing our dharma here on earth. That's what I really feel. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little rant, my little Q&A, my little talk about everything. I know it got really intense, but I felt like it was really important to say. So I love you guys so much. I hope you have a good one and I will see you later. Bye.